Hello there, it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. Okay, um, right, I live just outside of um, a stately home, a National Trust property, Hewingdon Manor, and my sister actually volunteers there, and she's a guide on Thursday, and you know, when they're busy at weekends. Anyway, she is working there this weekend, and they are doing a Victorian weekend. Now I was hoping that she would volunteer in the house so I could make a really nice costume for her. But she's not. She's going to volunteer in the CAF or she's working in the CAF. So I know. The only thing I can think to make is going to be a Mrs Mop hat. And I don't think she'll wear it because she's working as a chef there. So I know. But I'm still going to make the hat anyway. Now this here is sheeting material. It's actually sort of cream, sort of pale ivory, but I'm going to go with it. And what I've done is I've folded it probably into sixteenths, so I'm left with a point. What I have in my hand is a chalk pencil and attached to a bit of string so that I can get my circle. Now I'm making my circle as big as the cloth will allow. Now this is probably, uh, actually not probably, it is going to be a circle of 38 inches. I know, how huge is that? It's probably way too big. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this circle and then work down with it. Because I think to get round her head in an elastic way, I'm going to have to sew about here, so quite far down. Now, to do this, I'm going to use shearing, and I am going to do double needle zigzags on the edge of the circle. Now, the reason I'm doing that is to give it a sort of binding, decorative finish, and I am attempting to cut petals. Okay, now I have got no idea how this is going to work, what it's going to come out like. Obviously there's a lot to be said for ironing the cloth before we start. But I've done it anyway and um, I'm going to get rid of my scraps. So the next job for me to do is I need to decide where I'm going to put the elastic. <coughs> and I really want it quite straight. So what I'm going to do is do it by eye so that I know that it's going to be big enough to get round with, you know, excess. And I think you would be surprised how much fabric we're going to use for this, really. So what I've done is I've knotted the end of my string here and I've got my pencil still and I'm going to draw an arc. It's quite faint. I can see it, but it's not going to mark the fabric. Then, because I've got my knot, I can put it down and I can refold and I can do another line. And then I can pretty much go all the way around just by guesstimating. But this is all we're doing, we're guessing. Now, as long as I, it, yeah, I, I'll have a fairly good clue as well of when I'm going straight and when I'm sort of jumping off.
said, you really need it to be as gentle as possible. Yeah, we don't want her blacking out or coming home with a headache, do we? So I'm just going round now. And I always hand wind the bobbins. You can do it on the, the machine, but it just, it's, it's so simple just to hand wind them. And this way you can keep an eye on the tension because you don't really want any tension in here. All right, so I've gone around a few times and I'm sure that's enough. And I've buried my scissors again. Hoo -hoo. Now all I've got is the needle set up to do a running stitch. There's nothing fancy about that. I have placed the bobbin in the bobbin holder and I will place that in there. And I'm just going to pick it up like you would do a normal thread. Okay, so easy enough really. And my needle's already threaded, so that's a plus. And I'm just grabbing the foot off the other machine. Oh no! Oh, talk about slick, aren't I? Okay, I'm going to find a foot and I'm going to change the bobbin colour, the, the thread colour. Okay, so I found my foot and I've changed my thread to pale pink from salmon pink and I have my scrap bit of paper here and I'm literally just testing. So that's happy, you know, there's no two ways. On a simple running stitch, all that's different is the bobbin thread is in there. And I'm just going to pull that out and then sew proper using my pink line I drew as a guide. And I want to go round at least three times. Uh, this is because I think that will just give me a nice smooth elastic. Okay, so I'm following this pink line as accurately as possible. And my next time round, what I'll do is I'll place the previous level of stitches uh, next to my foot. So they're quite close together. Now, I was going to say something really interesting there and it's completely gone. So maybe I should have for um, you can see that it's working quite fine. Um, best not to stop the machine and re restart it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do them, I'm just going to slow straight on to the next bit. So as you can see it's only picking up a little bit. What I'll do on the next journey round is I will not um, stretch fabric because I can pull the fabric out and then I can keep my shearing this level or I can run it through the machine with it already slightly crumpled and then the next lot of crumpling will be even more so this is why I said three or four times round and it really is it's just I'm playing it by eye here Okay, so I'm hardly touching this fabric, I'm just letting the machine take it. Okay, so I'll switch the camera off and I'll keep going around till I feel it's gone to um, the size I want it. And you can literally see the difference there, can't you? Okay. Hiya. Well, it's a bit hard to know where the starting point is, really. <laughs> anyway, 
So what I'm doing now is I'm just going in between my lines. And this takes up loads of fabric, so this is all good. So there's a lot here. And we're getting there, aren't we? We can definitely see that it's shrinking. And I'm still just guiding it. Because what I don't want is it to, to do one of those where it sort of picks up a whole V. Because that looks really, really untidy. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, it's still really big. Oh well. be said for that. Check I'm actually still sewing. Yeah, of course I am. Okay, well, I actually, I'm going to carry on filming, but I'm going to cheat about something. So, I know, and I'll do this video again, but I'll make it smaller. Yeah, normal bobbin thread, I'm not going to touch that. I have my twin needle here, which is just lovely. And it's going to be inserted in. Now with my original thread, I'm going to thread one needle. And I'm going to give it a sharp point. real test for me. Okay. So that one needle is in. Bobbin thread still untouched. Ignoring, ignoring. Now, this is the same cotton. I just put it on a bobbin because I wanted it to be the same colour. And I'm just ignoring that previous thread. And it is best to thread them separately so that um, they don't get knotted up or you don't twist them. And then I'm just threading it into the other needle. So it's all good. And then I'm pulling it through. So with my scrap of fabric, which is getting very, very scrappy now. I'm going to test my stitches. Now what I mean by this is I'm going to test sort of my tension and everything. So, you know, double check that I'm happy. Now I've got that on a running stitch. I have got the double stitch as well. 
which is the same, but you'll find that's just a bit smaller and it sort of jumps about a bit. And then I've got my double zigzag, which is the stitch I love. Okay. So I'm not going to adjust the tension. What I'm going to do is very slowly, very tediously. If I find a little bit like um, that sticking out and then I'm going to sew on the edge and then that sort of seals it. It's very much like a roll pen on an overlocker. And what I'll do is I'm going to go all the way around and then I'm going to go and do another line. And I might use a different colour, uh, maybe, maybe one pale blue and one pale pink. So you can see it's very much like a roll ten, and um, it's very good. It's very great. I love it. Love it to death. So just keep an eye that these don't jump out of the tensioner. If we wanted to get too temperamental. Okay, so that's me. Um, just a little matter of doing it all and it's going to take me a while it's quite a it's quite a big hat and um, I'll be back when I'm closer to the end hey yeah I want to introduce you to the most embarrassing thing in my house okay Big Bear as he's called was made for my son's third Christmas my son was in ill in bed and um, yes so I was bored and I made Big Bear. Now my son's 21 now and the reason we've still got Big Bear is because he's really quite comfy to sit and watch the telly. Sorry about the vertigo guys. Okay, now life is quite cruel isn't it? I have got seven inches to go and look, I know. Now I have a choice, I can unwind everything and change the thread or I can keep sewing and when I've sewn through I'll just sew but you see that's gone now but I can carry on sewing with just one and then hopefully teddy bear won't mind yeah I don't think he's got a name I think he is just called big bear and I have tried to throw him away on many occasions I've just failed so here we go, I'm still sewing with just one thread for that last couple of inches. Yeah, and I'll probably sew back over it as well. Yeah, don't tell Ted. So yes, we, um, we're done. We have our oversized mop hat, and um, mm, let's give it to Teddy. Won't fit on me. <clears throat> it's actually perfect for him, although he probably doesn't know that. And um, put his ear in. So yes, I know. I can only apologise. Um, what am I to do, eh? I'm very human, I make mistakes, and I make bad judgement calls. But um, my sister says she won't wear it anyway, so even if it was nearer her size. So thank you for watching, and um, hopefully I'll see you soon.